Good day, everyone. Welcome to uh, the EMEA APJ quarterly leader meeting. Hope you're all having a good day. Our meeting today is hosted by Anne-Marie Schuver, EMEA APJ chapter and SIG liaison. Myself, Tammy Young, VIVIT director and of chapters and SIG for VIVIT. Uh, Stephanie Conkoy, our America's Chapter and SIG Liaison global and Global Marketing Coordinator, and Lisa Nordoff, our Vivid Engagement Director. We always like to start off with a little housekeeping, so this live session is being recorded and our recordings are available to all of our VIVIT leaders on the VIVIT website uh, within 24 hours of the meeting. Uh, our question and answer uh, session, we have a pane. Uh, please use that pane for question and answers. So our, web, our webinar control panel, uh, if you'll look, you can toggle between the full view and a compressed view of just the, the control icon and your question pane is at the bottom. So you just type your question there and hit send and you'll see it. Our agenda today is visit leaders running webinars. So how you set those up? how you promote those, the instructions to actually run the webinar, and the follow-up steps after the webinar is completed. Our HP Discover Las Vegas, our nominees for America's Awards, and some updates for the leaders. And I'd like to turn it over now to Anne-Marie. Thank you, Tammy. Hello, everybody. Um, yes, we would like to tell you some more about um, the Vivid Leaders uh, that will uh, run the webinars. We want to give you as leaders more responsibilities in the organization of webinars. Um, we want to do that because we that will give us Vivid staff some more time to build a, a Vivid community. And uh, as you know, every special interest group can have two webinars a year. And also chapters are uh, able to organize a webinar and from now on we want uh, we like you to do as follow if you want to organize one of the uh, an, a webinar event you can confirm the date with uh, Stephanie or with me and uh, we will then send you a form the form is called information needed to execute a webinar event you can see it at the bottom of this uh, slide and then there are some things you need to fill in on that form. And then next slide, please. And then if uh, we would like you to complete the form and then send it back to us. And uh, the date is on there then uh, and also the time and everything. And um, you'll be, you can send then out the calendar invitations from Outlook uh, yourself. So normally now we do that, but we would like you to do that from Outlook uh, for as well the webinar itself and the practice, the dry run, uh, as we call it as well. Um, and then you can start the promotion of your webinar. Once we have built it, we will make sure uh, when we get the form that you send us back, we will build the webinar on the Vivid website and we will build it uh, at the platform. There's two platforms that you can use. Stephanie will tell you later all about that. And um, as soon as it's up on the Vivid website, you can start a promotion. There's a link that you can use. And uh, three weeks ahead, you can send an email to the chapter and special interest group members. And we would like to hit the social media, like. Twitter and LinkedIn uh, and Facebook and one week before the actual date of the webinar you can do all those things 
as well. So email the chapter and SIG members from the uh, Vivid website and promote the webinar. And uh, if you let us know that you've uh, hit social media, then uh, we can uh, li we will like or re retweet your message to our to the people who are in our uh, groups and in our uh, uh, well social media. And uh, next slide, please. And then there's one more thing that you uh, can do before the that you need to do before the webinar. Uh, we always do that. Uh, you, you, we make the intro slides. We would like you to do that from uh, now on. Uh, you make the intro slides. There's a vivid template available, and uh, you make the intro slides. And after that, you may. Um, make sure that the uh, webinar slide deck is completed by the presenters uh, and you can use the vivid slide deck template for that this uh, this webinar that you're looking at right now is built on the vivid slide deck template so it's got the blue uh, thing at the top and the vivid logo at the bottom and well if you make the whole slide deck complete then you're ready for the webinar so next slide and then I would like to turn it over to Stephanie and she's going to tell you how to run a go-to meeting webinar go ahead Stephanie oh, great thanks Anne Marie wonderful thank you glad y'all could join us this morning uh, or afternoon uh, or evening wherever you are so the first platform that we use is a uh, webinar platform called uh, go to meetings go to webinar and so what I'm going to do is take you through a few slides, and then I'm going to show you a, a live a demo, if you will, on the GoToWebinar, and then the second platform we use, uh, which is also BrightTalk. So I'll take you through both. So for the GoToWebinar platform, which we're actually using today, um, what you do is, uh, oops, didn't mean to do that. Sign, you would sign in to GoToMeeting. You just go to www.gotomeeting.com 30 minutes before your webinar is to begin, um, and you do the same thing prior to your practice or dry run, but you don't need to do it 30 minutes before, you know, just five minutes before. But for a webinar, you definitely want to do it 30 minutes before. And 30 minutes before your webinar starts, then you will go to the main menu, which I will show you here in a little bit, but here's a little picture here um, of a drop-down menu, and you click on Panelist, as you can see here in the picture on the right-hand side of your screen in the middle. And uh, then you would send the panelist login link to all your panelists. And you can also check to make sure everybody's there and with the correct email addresses. And you work all those kinks out in the dry run. So, um, and so then when you're practicing, as you can see, there's two buttons there. You would click on practice. And you can practice as many times as you'd like prior to the webinar. And then the day of the webinar, after you send the panelist login link, you would uh, press start. And um, we have a lot of uh, eager beavers, if you will, for webinars. They're excited to hear the content, know more. And you'll have people waiting uh, 30 minutes before your webinar begins. I typically have a handful of folks waiting when I start the webinar. And what's nice about starting it then, at least they know that they're at the right place. There's a waiting room screen that pops up, which I'll show you as well. And uh, and they know you're there and, and that they're at the right place and that the webinar will start uh, on time. OK, so we'll go to the next slide. So let's back up to the webinar practice. Uh, just a few uh, reminders uh, here to help everyone to make it a great webinar. Uh, just make sure that everyone is uh, dialing in, and that's the key, dialing in on their telephone uh, if possible. We have many, 17 different countries you can dial in from. And make sure they're in a really quiet room. So it makes for a be better recording. Uh, of course, thank all the attendees for their time. And you'll want to assign a second organizer for, for your webinar. And um, we do this because if someone should lose internet for some unknown reason, then you'll have someone else who's still uh, recording. Uh, and the organizer will record and keep the webinar running as well. Without an organizer, the webinar will not run. So today we have three organizers on this webinar. So uh, we will not lose anyone. Uh, 
and uh, we're all talking on the telephone uh, for better audio quality. So, uh, and you can, I'll show you how to make someone an organizer once they come in as a panelist, and you can even bring someone in from the audience as a panelist or organizer. Okay, so, and then you definitely want to sync up calendars, have everyone look at their calendars on their computers to make sure that uh, everybody has the right day and time and uh, everyone's there 15 minutes prior to the webinar starting, um, just to make sure that everyone's there and for a, a sound check. Okay, and then the next thing is uh, just uh, see who's going to be showing the slide deck. Uh, one tip on showing slide decks is if, make sure it's not an organizer, if possible. Uh, when you're running a webinar and recording, you're pulling a lot of bandwidth, and sometimes the uh, slides tend to stick. So, and the less transitions the possible between presenters, it's typically best with GoToWebinar to have one person running all the slides. So uh, that we've uh, we've to learn this uh, the hard way a few times. <laughs> so I uh, wanted to pass that tip on, um, and then definitely practice your live demos. Uh, which you'll see how we do that today. You can flip back and forth. And to pop out of uh, showing slides, just Alt-Tab on GoToWebinar, and then you'll be able to maneuver within your screen, which you'll see me do in just a little bit. The, another option for webinars is polling questions, uh, which you can do during the webinar, and that's run from your uh, control panel for GoToWebinar. And those have to be preloaded prior to the webinar starting, as do the survey questions. And the survey questions, uh, which is the bottom bullet point, is questions that pop up after your webinar is over. So it's nice feedback. You know, how was the webinar useful, uh, relevant, uh, feedback, and what topics would you like to see in the future, or any other questions you can think to ask. And then seed questions. Seed questions are great to have. Um, you can enter those into the questions pane. If you're an organizer, you put it in chat and send it to, uh, to, the, to, to the questions, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. Um, and just sometimes people, I say, are a little shy to ask questions, and that always gets the ball rolling for questions coming in, or people need time to type them in. So those, those are always nice to have, too. OK. So we talked a little bit about the, uh, the phone option. The audio quality is better. And if you should ever lose internet, uh, you, we will never lose you on the telephone uh, when you're presenting a webinar. So we always ask if people can call in, uh, that would be best. So, um, And then always make sure uh, everyone involved in the webinar, panels and organizers, have the slide deck ready to, to put up as a backup. So if someone should go down, someone else can pop up the slides. We've had that happen before, where someone's on the telephone, the internet dropped, but they're still talking because they have the slides handy, and we just pop the slides up. So just a few tried and true tricks here for you. And I mentioned previously have the panelists arrive 15 minutes prior the day of the webinar for the sound check, and uh, make sure everyone's there on time. Um, we talked about the organizers who record the webinar. And then what you also want to do during the dry run and the day of the webinar is send a test question. And here's a picture. Um, you would type it in, uh, actually as an organizer, you type it in the chat box and then send it to questions. You would assign it to a um, whoever is uh, you've assigned to send the questions to. We usually have one person designated to do that. And the best practice for questions is um, once the question's assigned, if you're a panelist, the questions pane will pop up. And you can undock it from the main um, menu toolbar. And you can expand it by dragging the corners and the sides. And you can actually see what's going on. So this just shows you. So if you see the little arrow with a V underneath it, that's what you click on to undock it. And then you can really expand it and see what's going on. OK. So everybody's at the webinar. Uh, you've, uh, you're have you ready to go. So right at the top of the hour or a half hour, whatever time your webinar is to begin, uh, you just uh, 
have the presenter ready to show their screen. And uh, you can see there, there's a button on the right-hand side called Change Presenter. And what you'll do is find the person and make them presenter. And at that point, the audience will be able to see your slides, see your screen. They cannot hear you at this point. And uh, make sure everybody's ready to go. Then have them put it in slide mode. You want to pick the clean screen option. So what will pop up is show my screen. And there's a little black arrow next to show my screen. And it's the second option. That way they don't see the icons at the bottom of your computer for Word or Excel or Outlook or whatever it is that you have open. Um, and it's best to close as many programs as possible uh, when you're showing a webinar for uh, so reminders don't pop up or any distractions or instant messaging, things like that. So, And then uh, w uh, at that point, just double check once the person has their slides up, whoever is presenting. And then you can press uh, sh uh, right here. Uh, Let's uh, show my screen and uh, then start recording. And then you're off um, and running. So uh, a lady will come on and say the webinar is about to begin. And then everybody's live. <laughs> Everybody can hear and see you. And then another best practice is you can chat with each other within uh, the uh, panelists and organizers or private chat between each other. Uh, this is a good way to communicate and exchange cell numbers if you uh, you need to text. So go on to the next. And so after the webinar is over, you've recorded. It's been a great session, um, presented, questions. Uh, you'll go up to File on your toolbar here and click it, and then uh, click on End Webinar for All. And so then what happens is you'll see uh, the GoToMeeting toolbar transcoding uh, your webinar into a WMB file. And prior to the webinar starting, I should back up under File here. You'll, it, you'll have to direct it to where you want the recording to save to. I have it saved in a file. Some people have it saved on their desktop, just wherever you can go and grab it. Um, and so you click on File, then you click on Preferences, and then you click, uh, you want the WMV file and then uh, direct it to the file. It'll have you browse. And then you're off and running for uh, directing your recording on where to go when it's done. So, so now you've, it's transcoded. It takes about 15, 20 minutes. And um, then you would go in and find your file. And then uh, we rename our files for standard format. And you just, of course, right click on the file name click the rename option, and just put it in the format of basically the only thing you have to change is the date. We put the month, oops, back up here, the month, the date, and the, and the year, and then of course the title of the webinar. And then what we do is then we're, we upload all these webinars to box.com, and there's a file folder there that we will have enabled for you that you have access to once you log into box.com to upload the webinar to. And, uh, that uh, doesn't take very long. I will uh, recommend, if possible, that you hardwire to upload. It goes much faster. Uh, that's what uh, I've experienced versus being wireless. <laughs> and once that's done, you'll just email Julianne Rutten, our uh, content manager, and her email address is here for you, to, the, to let her know that the webinar recording is on box.com. And she'll go ahead and place it on the Vivid website in two places. Um, our a Vivid Global uh, Assistant, Lindsay Zajac, will have created a group page for you on your SIGR chapter page. And so the slide deck will be there and the webinar recording. Joanne will put it there. And we also have, uh, we keep all recordings under webinars on the Vivid website. So she'll also place it there as well and she'll let you know when it's done. So, um, and then if you could, uh, Hopefully one of us will have your slide deck or send it to us in a PDF format, and we'll be sure to upload that to the group page for you. OK. All right. So again, and then you're able to export what's called an attendee report after the webinar. And uh, I'll show you where to go for that as well. Um, you'll send um, 
from that, you can grab all the questions that were asked, put it into a Word document, and send it to your presenters to answer in a written format. And then we change that to a PDF file. So you can send that again to Lindsay, um, and we can upload that and place it where your slide deck and the webinar recording are as well. So, okay, and then where do you find this group page? So when you go to your chapter or SIG page, you see group admin options typically. And the group pages are all here. You can access them. You just click on group pages. You'll find the webinar that you just did. And it, the group page is titled the same as the webinar. And when it opens, you'll see a link to the group page. And this is the link that you would want to share with your chapter and SIG members. Um, and put in the follow-up email for GoToWebinar. And I'll show you again. So you click on email notifications. And you just have to set these up. There's two that you set up. One goes to everyone who attended, and one goes to everyone who did not attend. And then you would just share this link with them where the slide deck, the webinar recording uh, are located, and they can view. And then we typically tell them uh, the question and answers will be at the same link in the coming week. We give everybody about a week to get that in. OK. So let me show you this. Um, OK, um, my computer, I can't see my icon, so OK, I can't get to my icons. Let's see, will this let me go? Let's try this. Nope. I'm doing the alt tab. Oh, here we go. I saw something flash up. OK. There we go. Let's click on this. Oops. Try it one more time. If not, I'll just move on. There it is. OK, it's not letting me get in there. Let's see. Oh, there we go. I got it. Great. OK, can you guys see that OK? Yes, we can. So when you're logged in, OK, great, thank you. So when you're logged in to GoToMeeting, um, this is what you see. So the, here's some of the pictures we talked about. So here's the Practice button, and here's the Start button. And these webinars are already built, ready to go. Um, so if you, here's where you would edit any content about the webinar, if you need to edit anything about registration. Um, this yellow plus sign expands here if you click on it. If you need to edit the date or time of your webinar, you can do that here. Lindsay will typically set this up, but sometimes you have to come in and make changes. And this link here is the link where you would send out and use for folks to register, register if you need to do that. Typically, this will all be set up on the Vivid website. So um, it's best if they register through the Vivid website. But this is where you get the link to the GoToMeeting. So. OK, and here's this drop-down menu I was telling you about here. And so if you click on this, uh, here's the organizers and panelists here. So hopefully you guys can see this OK. It's coming up, and it's moving slowly. Um, and this is where you put in everybody's name, email address, and you send the panelist login links from. So for this webinar, here's our panelists. And then you just resend all invitation emails. And unfortunately, you can't send um, just individual panelists login uh, details. It, you can only send all at one time. Sometimes you have to send them a couple times. And each panelist has their own unique link. And you can't share those. So I wanted to point that out. And we'll go back here. I'm not going to change anything. So, and this is where it gets fun. Sometimes there's people that show up you didn't know were coming. You've got to get them in. And that's what we work all these things out in the dry run. So, OK, so we'll go to the next one, branding and theme. So this is where I was telling you there's a waiting room picture, if you recall on the slides. This is where you build this. And uh, just to kind of give you an idea of why we start the, the webinar 30 minutes early. And it's coming up as well. So. Uh, we have a basic theme we use for, for Vivid and a special color. So that's all put in there for you. Um, and it's being slow since we're running the webinar. So you put in your, present, your main presenters and a picture. 
Um, and what's inter neat is here's the waiting room slide. So you, you can see what people see. It's kind of like today. Hopefully you all were able to see the waiting room slide. You can preview it. It's coming up here ever so slowly. <laughs> And um, this is what they see before uh, the uh, presenter shows their slide deck. So you can get an idea of what people can see. And then uh, it's nice to know yourself, because when you're an organizer panelist, you don't see any of this. So you know what they're seeing is what you'd like them to see. So that's there. All right, we'll go back. I won't change anything. And so then the next thing we're going to look at is um, I believe email notifications. Let's see. Yes, here's email notifications. So we were talking about how, where do I put the uh, group page link? What do I do with follow-up emails? Because this is something that you guys will be doing now. This is where you could, you would do it. If it's past the day of the webinar, you will find you would go to webinar history, find your webinar, and then click on the email notification. So I wanted to point that out. But if you're doing it the day of the webinar, it will still be in the main menu here. So you just scroll all the way to the bottom. And we typically preset it for six days. And uh, that's the longest you can do it. To, and so you can, you can change that setting. If you were able to get it done the first day uh, or the second day, you can say, oh, I want this email to go out two days after the webinar. You can go in and change that. So, and then right here, this is follow-up email to attendees, follow-up emails to registrants who didn't attend. And so here, I'll click on the yellow plus sign. This is where, where you put in the wording. Uh, for a SIG or chapter webinar, you, you know, you thank them for coming to your event. Um, and then uh, tell them how to join your group. And uh, we'll try to set this up as much as possible. And then here's where you put in your link for the group page here. Uh, and that's real important. And uh, we'll scroll down. And if you have any questions, you know. And then to preview it, of course, what I do is I copy and paste into Word because I'm notorious for my typos. And make sure my spelling's correct. Uh, you can just copy and paste it into Word. Um, and then here you can preview what it's going to look like, uh, which is really nice. Let's see. We'll scroll down here. And that's what everybody will receive. You know, thank you for attending, and you can make sure it's what you want. It's sometimes hard to see in this little window here. And you do the same thing for the people who didn't attend. It's just a little different wording. So I wanted to point that out to you. So, great. OK. I'm back up here. And so then the other two things that you have to set up uh, ahead before the webinar starting are polling questions that you'll do from within the webinar. And those are launched and viewed from your control panel. Um, are the polling questions? Right here, you can see polling questions. And there's only two types of polling questions you can do during a webinar. It's select one answer or select all that apply. And this is where you'd um, put those polling questions in. So, uh, and you can enter as many as you like, but there's only five answer choices, and there's only a certain number of characters you can put into, and it lets you know. So there's single answer or multiple answer. Um, what you do is you just, you know, how put in a question, how are you? Oops, I can't type. I, how are you? And then you can put, you know, great, uh, a good, and then you just create the question and then save it. And that, that's key. Make sure you save it. So that's all you do there. I'm not going to obviously save that. I'll just get out of here. I just kind of wanted to show you how to do that. And then the survey questions. You have a lot more choices. I believe there's five or six choices. We'll take a look here. Uh, you can do single answer, all that apply, ratings, short answer, um, open-ended essay. So here's the survey questions. And we have some built here for you to look at. So we'll take a look. And it's coming at its own pace again, since we're running the webinar today. Sorry. <laughs> OK, so here's the survey questions. And if I, if I do this drop down menu, you can see all the different. So there's five, five, is that five? five different choices. And, and then you can uh, then create the question. and. 
let's see, let's do the one that's rating. So we'll just edit this one, and you can kind of see how would you rate today's webinar? Excellent, good, fair, poor. And uh, just to give you an idea and of what that looks like. Okay. So that's it for a go-to webinar in a nutshell. So I'll uh, pop back to the slides here. I'll go back here. And so the second platform is a Bright Talk webinar. Okay, so we'll go to that. So the Bright Talk webinar will be set up for you. And what's interesting with Bright Talk is you have to set up two webinars. You have to set up a practice dry run, and you also have to set up the actual webinar, which Lindsay will do for you guys. Um, so uh, we'll give you the sign in to Bright Talk. And there's a special uh, instructions for presenters on Bright Talk. This is just a little bit different. And I'll show you, you, uh, you'll see a button on the main screen, uh, and you'll get the instructions. It'll give you the option to copy it. And uh, then you would put that in your calendar invitation. And so there's separate instructions both for the dry run and also for the actual live webinar. But you do it the same way both days. So. And again, um, at the webinar practice, you just um, uh, thank all the attendees for their time, of course. Double check the calendars, just like we did for GoToWebinar. Um, practice having the panelists move your slides. And for Bright Talk, everybody can move the slides who's a panelist or presenter. Um, so you don't have to change screens or make one person um, the presenter. The, with Bright Talk, though, the only option you have is slides. You cannot do live demos. So if that helps you in determining which platform you would like for us to use for your webinar, um, uh, that the Bright Talk is slide only, and the go-to webinar is uh, slides with transitions, uh, live demos, of course, and slides. So uh, you're a little more flexible there. So um, Again, just make sure everybody's in a quiet room when presenting. Uh, practice the polling questions, and you can also do that on GoToWebinar, I should have mentioned. During a dry run, you can practice launching and viewing the polling questions as well, and on BrightTalk as well. Uh, again, talk about seed questions, and seed questions just have uh, the org one of the organizers put those, have those ahead of time and put those in uh, the day of the webinar uh, once it's up and going. And on Bright Talk, there's no flexibility on going over. Um, on GoToWebinar, there's an open-ended time. We set it up for an hour. On Bright Talk, if you've set up a 60-minute webinar, two minutes after the webinar, it will shut down. Um, so you just have to keep that in mind uh, as you're going through it. And uh, I wanted to point that out. Let's see. OK. So once it's time for a Bright Talk webinar to start, it has a countdown. Uh, a big square will pop up in your screen, and you can't miss it to hit start. <laughs> so um, of course, we talked about how it stopped 60 minutes prior to, to that. And the, another, the nice thing about Bright Talk is the webinar recording is available on the Vivid website, and an email goes out to anyone who registered and attended within two to five minutes of the webinar ending. So that's pretty neat. Um, you do want to grab the link for the webinar, uh, and you can do that from uh, the webinar section, and that will take you straight to the recording. And, but just uh, make sure Julianne takes that link and email her with that link to your webinar so she can put it on your group page. So let me see if I can show you a little bit about Bright Talk here. Let's see. Um, Bright Talk should be here. Here we go. Okay, I'll try it again. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. So I've here's Bright Talk. So when you log into Bright Talk, you see that Vivid has two channels. So we uh, we use the top channel, Vivid Worldwide. This is our private channel. Vivid Worldwide Webinars is our public channel. And then you click on to to, to manage channels. Um, the day of the webinar, you won't have to do this. You'll have that link to click on that I will show you where to get for the presenters. But this is where you go to get those instructions. Um, and, then, and so what you'll see is uh, on the screen when it pops up, 
here we go. So here's all the webinars. And you can see here we have practice and then the actual live webinar. But what I wanted to do is show you um, this webinar here that hasn't been run. And a manage button should come up shortly here. It's still working. And there it is. So I and you click on Manage, and this is where you can get all the details of your webinar here. So um, this is where the slide decks are uploaded, and we'll show you how to do that. And for Bright Talk, the slide decks do have to be preloaded at least a day before the webinar, as well as the polling questions put in. There's not a survey option. You'll see webcast survey, but what this is is really questions for the registration page. So, um, so follow-up survey questions uh, are not an option with Bright Talk, and uh, we typically don't do that for the registrations. Bombard people with a lot of questions <laughs> um, tends to turn people away from attending the webinar or registering. So, here's what it looks like when you get into Bright Talk. So, here's the presenter's uh, instructions, which you just click on Get Instructions, and you would do this for the dry run and for the actual webinar. And, and then it just here's, uh, gives you the link, the phone number, the pen, which is key, and you just copy the clipboard and, of course, paste it in uh, to your calendar invite. That's so, okay. Uh, a couple other things. Um, let's see, we'll close here. It's very user friendly. Um, this is where, when the day of the webinar, you just click on questions. Questions are coming in. All the presenters and panelists can see them which is nice, <laughs> so you don't have to send questions to anyone. Uh, votes, these are polling questions within the webinar, so uh, this is where you can uh, launch them, of course, prior to the webinar, add them, and you, it just, it'll give you the option to launch it. Okay, um, attachments, this is where you can put in a copy of the slide deck, the PDF form, which is nice. You can do this ahead of time. We, of course, put in, you know, how to join Vivid information about the special interest group um, uh, that is uh, putting on the webinar. So any, anything you'd like to put here, attachments or links, you can do that. Great. Um, okay, and then to preview the slides, you can go here. And uh, there's only one slide here. We always just put one slide in, so pe that's what people see. But you just move slides here, next slide, previous slide. And during the webinar, this is all, all you do. And all presenters have the same screen. So, so that's uh, Bright Talk in a nutshell. Great. And so, Tammy, I'll turn it back over to you. Tiffany, thank you so much. That was great. That was fantastic. So lots of good information. Um, with this comes a lot of responsibility, and we realize that um, because uh, these ladies are the ones that, uh, that have been doing all this for you. And so uh, we appreciate paying special attention to um, you know, posting things and being timely with responses and things like that. So uh, thanks to everyone for that, and so really fun topic. Um, our next topic is the HP Discover 2014 in Las Vegas. So we wanted to give you a little information about that. Can we go to the next slide? Maybe I'm... It's stuck, Tammy. I'm working on it. I apologize. <laughs> no, no problem. Just, I'm going to try to close this out, and that might help us here. My apologies. Let's try this. Go to slideshow mode. There we go. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you so much. Um, so it's June 10th through the 12th, again, at the Nation in Las Vegas. Registration is now available via our website, and we want you to use the Vivit code. Uh, what that does is that um, tells HP that you're a Vivit member, and we like to keep up with how many of our members are attending. So please encourage all your members to register through our website, and um, we send out 
uh, if you could send out email blasts, we we do it as well. But if you could also piggyback on that and encourage that with your um, with your members, that would be fantastic. Again, this year we're very fortunate to have our deep dive training sessions, and they will be on Monday, June 9th from one to five. And um, I've seen the lists are quite impressive this year. So our deep dive sessions, they enhance your HP Discover experience. If you haven't been to one, I have. They are fantastic. Please sign up. Uh, you can do that in the registration process, or you can log in after you register and, and sign up for those. So you hear real world implementation and experiences, examples from uh, actual practitioners, um, who are in the field and solving those business problems with HP tools every day. Um, it's a great opportunity to advance professionally as well. Again, this year we are so fortunate that each session is only $99. So we want to uh, pay special thanks to our sponsors. Um, our sponsors cover most of the costs of that, and so it's only $99 for you. Um, it's a $400 savings, so uh, those deep dive sessions can be added to your new or existing HP Discover conference registration, like I had said before. If you haven't signed up, please do so. The content is fabulous this year. Um, and here's Here's the, the list. So deep, deep dive into ALN 11.5.2, and Checkpoint Technologies will be doing that. Uh, deep dive into Web Services API using LoadRunner, and HP will be doing that. ERP testing with HP, ALN, and QC. Methodologies, best practice, hands-on workshop. Kayaya, Kenyaya is doing that. Um, HP operations and analytics using HP big data analytics to transform IT operations, results positive is doing that one. Uh, improved continuous delivery with HP Loadrunner and HP UFT integration. Orthy is doing that one. Better SAP application quality for less effort in Telecorp and making management analytics in for. I think I'm going to sign up for that one. Uh, that's HP as well. So as you can see, lots of good content this year. Um, the Vivid SIG Roundtable registration uh, through Discover Session Scheduler. If you haven't gone out and, and uh, registered for your uh, sessions yet, these can actually be registered for the SIG Roundtable through that session scheduler. So, and if you have, um, I encourage you to go back and look for these session IDs. Um, the Roundtable title is there as well. So lots of, lots of good content and discussion going on here. HPLM uh, 12 web client fresh look at an old friend, performance testing, uh, the era of mobility. So uh, performance is definitely uh, very important with that. So uh, that sounds like a very good webinar. I mean, uh, roundtable, excuse me. Performance testing, past, present, and future. HP UST, we've got a lot of focus on UST this year. So um, not only with with HP sessions, but uh, in the uh, deeper dive sessions, and now here with the roundtable. ITSN, tips and tricks, always good information, and big data challenges, exploring dark data. Um, so, like I said, if you have, said, if you're coming and you have scheduled your sessions, I encourage you to go back and, and look at these roundtables and participate where you can. Next. 
So HP Disclaimer Law Status 2014, HP CAB SIG meeting. Uh, you do have, for the CAB, you do have to register. It is required. Uh, Agile in Enterprise with Agile Manager, AON and QC, Application Performance Management, uh, Configuration Management Systems, Universal Discovery, Configuration Manager, um, Customer Support Journey, Data Center Automation, HP Operations and Orchestration, HP Service Anywhere, HP Software as a Service, which is interesting, by the way. If, um, if, I don't know if any of you actually use it as a service, but um, that's, uh, that's a great service. Um, network Management, Operations Analytics, Operations Management, HP Propel, SAP. That's just some of the topics. So if you um, are interested in registering for that CAB, please do so. You do have to register. So we're really excited about our um, theme this year, which is Experience the Magic, Advocacy, Community, and Education for Vivid. That's our overall theme. Uh, calendar invitations for leader dinners, breakfast with the HP Marketing, our Vivid Reception and Annual Meeting, and they've already been sent out. Um, <coughs> our website's also been updated, I believe. So um, please let Stephanie know if you have not received them. Um, actually, you can let uh, any of us know if you have not received them, and we'll make sure that Stephanie gets that. Same shirts will be given out to all of our leaders helping in the visit booth, so please sign up to help in the booth. We want to meet you and spend some time with you, so please sign up for that. Visit Leader Calendar Events for HP Discover 2014 Las Vegas. Um, as you can see, there is a lot of events for Vivid Leaders uh, starting on uh, Monday. We've got those deep dive sessions. We've got the Leader Dinner. And Tuesday, we hit you bright and early with breakfast. <laughs> Give you some nutrition for the rest of the day. HP Discover Force, our SIG roundtables begin. We have prize drawing starting. Um, we encourage you to make that general session. General session on first day is always fantastic. Um, we've got another prize drawing in the evening, and then we have our member reception uh, also that evening. Wednesday, uh, we uh, have our big round table starting at 9 a.m. We've got a couple of prize drawings on the morning, Wednesday afternoon. We have our annual meeting. And then what's always so much fun for me is the awards and um, to celebrate Vivid and all your accomplishments with HP. So uh, that's always a, a fun evening. And uh, we have a, a a really great venue this year. So um, we had more roundtables on Thursday and our last prize drawing as well in the morning before we cut everyone loose. Maybe I should say that for Las Vegas. <laughs> Next. So sign up to be a volunteer in our booth. We, we need you, we, um, and we want to meet and spend some time with you. So uh, please do sign up in that volunteer booth. Um, so we, we're using volunteer spot to do that, to organize our volunteers and the times. And if you have any free time in your schedule and you are not in a uh, you know, session, we would appreciate you spending that time with us. So uh, you can sign up for Vivid Booth for HP Discover 2014. And so it's really easy. You go to that link. You put in your email address. And you will not need to register for an account to do this on volunteer spot. This is just to, to volunteer for your time slot at the booth. Sign up choose what spot you're volunteering for, 
and it will send you an automated confirmation and reminder. So can't get easier than that. We thought we'd let you know a little bit about where we're exactly located in the Discover Zone. Um, we have a, a large space in between the Innovation Theater and uh, the software area. So you can see that it's um, circled there in the, almost the center of the page at the bottom. So great location. We should be really easy to find. If you are slammed and you can't make uh, time to, to work the booth, please make time to stop by. Introduce yourself. We want to meet you um, if we haven't already. So our America's Award nomination. America's 2014 nominees are, for later of the year, Paul Shovlin, Chef Pugge, Brian Pohl, Evan Hamilton, and Mark Herbert and Todd DiCaprio were also nominated, but they're not eligible. So uh, thank you to whomever uh, nominated them. I, I know uh, I've spoken with both of them, and they are, they are quite honored. Champion of the Year, Michael Vaughn, Todd DiCaprio, and Amy Heidel. I believe the reason, Stephanie, correct me, uh, Mark, is on the board, so he is not eligible for that reason. And Todd has won previously, so he's not eligible. Is that correct? That is correct. And Mark's also won, I believe. Oh, I think. Mark. But for sure okay. he's on the board. <laughs> so for sure he's on the board, so he may be yeah. double eliminated. Yep. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and Speaker of the Year, Christine Olson, Shane Evans, Ron Cornwall, Megan Shelton, and I was nominated, which I'm, I'm so honored, thank you, but I'm not eligible because I'm on the board. So I will say thank you, and I'm very honored, but again, not eligible because I'm on the board. So some leader updates. How we want to keep you informed. Every month you receive a Vivid newsletter, Vivid Informed News. Um, every quarter we send you the Vivid Leader update, and special news will be announced in an email to all leaders. Emory, did you have any comments regarding that? Well, the, uh, there's, a, there's a slight change there, because um, normally we would send out the Vivid Leader updates every month, but a lot of the information is already in the Vivid Inform news. So that's why we, um, why, that's why we said we are going to send you the Vivid Leader updates every quarter, and um, the leader. So the other news is from the Vivid Inform news, and as you said, special news will be announced in a separate email. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. So we want to thank you all today uh, for, for joining the webinar. Um, we had a lot of content today, but know that this will be posted for, for your additional viewing. Uh, you may actually want to print out the slides for the, the webinar portion to, to serve as, as a guide going forward. Um, and we hope that this will encourage you to, um, to schedule more webinars with your, with your members. Um, there is a short survey at the end and, uh, of the meeting, so we would appreciate it very much if you would complete that survey. It gives us good information, and, uh, and that's what we need. So, I'm not seeing that we have any questions currently, uh, so we will end the presentation. And thank you so much again for attending. Everyone have a great evening. Thank you all.
Have a good day. Bye-bye.